in, in the beginning, I was uh, influenced by, well, a number of people, I would think, but probably the, the biggest one would have been Elvis Presley. I'm sure everybody in the business has taken an awful lot from, from Elvis. Uh, in the early days of when you start out in the business, it's, it was something to, to look at and say, could I get there? <laughs> now, apart from the fact I loved his music, and that sort of stuff in the early days. Uh, the, the Rolling Stones, I, I was a big, big fan of the Rolling Stones. Uh, that's why I love, I love raw stuff. I got that from the Stones. And Chuck Berry, now that was the main sort of music I used to like, um, to bop to myself and, and that sort of stuff, you know. Our audience spans across the boards, young and old. And I mean, some of the people come to see us who've been coming for years and years and years. Now. Uh, they probably started bringing their kids with them and those kids now are sort of growing up and they are coming and this is why you have a sort of there's no age limit at our shows funnily enough but then it's it's a the show we do it's it's a, a total show for people it's nothing there's nothing grotty about the show uh, you can bring your children to the show they're not going to be uh, bamboozled with bad language or dirty jokes, that doesn't happen, and, uh, or, or any sort of rioting or that sort of stuff. It's just, it's just a show that, you can, that anyone can go to. And the people who are coming, as I say, um, a lot of those people, I know for a fact, don't go to any other shows. We can be in an area, uh, let's say Limerick, and we'll see a family there. Now, they won't go out to another show until we're back there again. And this happens all over the country. Like, there are pockets of people like that. People travel fast distances to come to the shows. And it's, it's beautiful to see it, like, and it's great to, uh, because you can get a rapport going with, with people like that. And it's, it's uh, you sort of know them. And it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's more of a party now. When, when you can look down and you can see this one, that one, this one, oh, hello, Jim, hello, Mary, hello, Kathleen, and all that sort of stuff. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a great, it's a feeling. You know, we Basically, get a great feeling. touring overseas is the same as, as touring in, in Ireland. Um, we, we have a lot of fun like when we, when we go to England and Scotland and that sort of stuff. Now, we, we sort of broke a lot of new ground over, over a number of years back with uh, Australia was one of them. And um, South Africa, of course, we did a lot of work in, in South Africa at one point. Uh, we've done the States all over the states, like Las Vegas been been one of the, the major the major places. But I think the wildest uh, tour that, that I've been on and that I that I loved and, and and had a wonderful time was in Russia. It was absolutely fantastic. The audiences were just incredible, uh, ultra friendly, uh, hospitable and so appreciative it was it was it was frightening. And you, we really thought we were going to Russia uh, as a sort of a cultural uh, thing. And I thought, well, you know, what are they going to know about me in Russia? But funny enough, they knew the songs and they would applaud loudly when you'd go into a particular song. Or the one thing that used to get me all the time was you'd, you'd sing a song and you hit a high note and hold it. And they'd all stand up and cheer right in the middle of the the note and you could hold that note for 10 minutes and they'd cheer for 10 minutes. Incredible people. We, we have a sort of a distinct sound. I had an Italian songwriter for a number of years, Roberto De Nova, and his partner uh, Peter Yellowstone and they wrote a lot of songs for me now. They're Italian people, right? So they're writing in a continental sort of vein. Before they came along I, I had done stuff with um, different people like um, Hammond and Hazelwood who wrote Good Looking Woman for me and, and um, uh, make me an island. After they finished writing, well, Hammond, as you know, went to live in America, and Hazelwood went off to do film scores. But then Roberto came along, and we changed the whole style of the music. When he arrived in in '74, he started writing stuff like Sweet Little Rock and Roller, um, Goodbye Venice, Crazy Woman, mad music, but continentally flavored rock and roll music, which was I, I, I was really excited about and it changed the whole the whole business for me at the time. And we got that out of that, I think we sort of developed I like to think of myself this particular as a sound. romantic person. I am very emotional, yeah. I'm one of those people that I can't watch uh, sad movies for too long. Like if something is going bad for somebody or I, I tend to fill up a little bit. Uh, Net result I don't go to the cinema. 
very much because uh, you feel stupid in the cinema and something very sad happening and, and you're sort of, you know, and you're pretending that no there's something wrong with your nose, you know. When you're touring, it's a long, long day, every day. Let's just take Ireland, for instance. You can leave home at 12 o'clock in the day and you're travelling to where you're going. You get there, you have to make sure everything is set up properly. Now, OK, the crew have that done, but it's, you still have to check it out. You have to do a sound check, make sure everything works, the whole lot. You get a slight break for a bit of dinner and you're back on and, and you do so, the show. If you finish at about 12 o'clock again at night and you have to drive, let's say, from Cork to Mullingar or from, from Dublin to Galway or wherever for the next one, it's, um, it's really a long, long day. Like, it takes an awful lot of time. An awful lot of people think it's a wonderful, glamorous life. Now, it's not. It, it, it's anything but. Because you spend most of your life hanging around, waiting for things to happen. Um, you're waiting for the guys to check out the gear to make sure it's working. Um, then you're waiting for one thing or another. It's just, but it's constantly been, been on the job. You're, you're on the job for uh, goodness knows 12, 13 hours anyhow, most, most days. And when we, um, when we get a little bit of a break, we like to hit the nearest golf course, wherever it is, and murder a little white ball around the place to get rid of all your uh, tensions and all the stuff that's, that's building up in your head over just, over just work, because it's, 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 a tough, it's a tough job. We're sitting here right now in, in our own recording studio, uh, which we built two or three years ago. Uh, we found a need for it because uh, when we were recording it was tripping to London, tripping to Dublin, tripping to Birmingham, so it was, it was all getting too much. Basically my band do all the recording here and um, Adrian, my bass player, does a lot of the uh, production. He has written uh, a number of the songs as well, so uh, it's, it's going to be a very tight unit. Now having said that, my band are well, they're simply the best. And they're a wonderful bunch of fellas to work with. There isn't anything impossible for them. They're never cranky. They're never... Well, they are at times. But never to the point of keeping, keeping a thing going that I don't want to do that or I don't want to do this. Everybody does what's asked of them. And we get on terribly well together, like in the band. And there's a sort of a wind-up goes on every day. There's a wind-up about one thing and another between the lads. Now, it's gone so far, there's even a wind-up on the wind-up. <laughs> it's gone to that extent. Then we have, um, we have a great road crew, very dependable lads. They do their job, so this is, this is a wonderful thing. And they're a great The only time well. I'd uh, consider uh, getting out of this business is when the people out there don't want me. Uh, as long as they're there and they want to hear what I do, uh, I don't see any reason to, uh, to retire from the, from the business and play golf uh, full time or whatever. I mean, you can get fed up playing golf too. <laughs> Mind you, a lot of people say, oh, no, you can't, but you can. But seriously, I, I can't, uh, I can't um, visualise myself being, being off the road. Uh, I'd be bored for starters. And I don't know, I think it's a lot of people out there and uh, I want to be there with them. <laughs>